After the Krebs cycle, all of the reducing equivalents are sent to the electron transport chain. So, for example, NADH is donated to the co what's called complex 1. And there are four major complexes in the electron transport chain. So you've got complex 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, um, ATP synthase is sometimes called complex 5. However, it doesn't actually accept electrons. It just uh, uses the proton gradient to produce ATP. So as electrons are donated to complex 1, they get passed down to each complex until at complex 4, the electrons are donated to oxygen, which uh, allows it to create water. And as the electrons are being passed around at each complex, protons are being pulled through the uh, the membrane to form a, a proton gradient. So you get a buildup of, of protons. So I'll draw in some protons up here, H positive. And so this does two things. The first thing it does is it creates a chemical gradient. So you have a higher chemistry, uh, a higher number of hydrogens on this side than you do on this side. So you have a chemical gradient, but you also have an electrical gradient. So you have more positive charge over here and you have more negative charge over here. And this electrochemical gradient uh, allows uh, rapid diffusion through ATP synthase and that movement through ATP synthase actually generates ATP from ADP and phosphate. Each complex is made up of several subunits. For example, complex 1 is made up of 46 subunits. Complex 2 is made up of 4 subunits. Complex 3, 11. Cytochrome C, which is right here, only has one subunit. And then complex 4 has 13 subunits. Now ATP synthase has an F0 component and an F1 component. The F0 component has three subunits and the F1 component has five, so a total of eight uh, subunits for ATP synthase. Each of these uh, complexes use several prosthetic groups in uh, transferring electrons. For example, uh, complex one uses uh, FMN, which is flavin mononucleotide, and it also uses an iron sulfur prosthetic group. And complex two uses essentially the same prosthetic group as complex 1. Complex 3, however, uses heme instead of uh, flavin mononucleotide, but it also uses iron sulfur prosthetic group. And then complex 4 uses, or cyto well, let's uh, not skip cytochrome uh, C. So cytochrome C is, uh, it uses heme only, and complex 4 uses heme, uh, and then Two copper sub two copper prosthetic groups, copper A and copper B. These prosthetic groups are what allow the electrons to be transferred and allows it to temporarily hold on to an electron. Now going back and looking at the actual um, complexes, protons can be pumped through complex one, they can be pumped through complex three, and they can be pumped through complex four. Complex two uh, doesn't have sufficient power to pump protons and so this is important because if you look where NADH donates its electrons it donates at complex 1 however complex 2 gets its electrons either from complex 1 or from FADH2 and so FADH2 when it donates electrons to complex 2 it gets it transfers fewer hydrogens because it can only transfer hydrogens at complex 3 in complex 4 but not at complex 1 so the protons from f or the electrons from FADH2 pump fewer protons than NADH and so the pumping of protons to the inner membrane space creates uh, the gradient that allows the protons to flow through ATP synthase and this movement through ATP synthase is called the proton motive force so I'm going to write that out proton motive force. Now this negative charge, it's not just free electrons, because we always talk about electrons, but it's not just free electrons. So what happens is the electrons get passed uh, finally to complex 4, and then it donates it to 
O2. So O2 will pick up two electron pairs from the electron transport chain and hydrogen uh, will bind to it creating H2O so the hydrogens will come through here and you get H2O. And again another thing you see is the locality so where the hydrogens need to be to combine with oxygen the, uh, that's placed near uh, so where the hydrogens are being pumped into. And so what you end up getting is the splitting of one O2 gives you two H2Os. So that's how the electron transport chain works. What we're going to look at next um, is how do the uh, how do the electrons actually get into the mitochondria? So the outer membrane of the mitochondria is considered fairly permeable, and so usually it's considered equivalent with the cytosol for most purposes. However, this inner membrane is much harder to traverse, and so the and actually NADH uh, can't cross. It can cross over here, but it can't cross that membrane. And I don't know why I put NADF. That's NADH. And so that'll be our next video.